Well, hey, good morning to you, Parkview Baptist Church. It has been a long time since I have given you any kind of update uh, in a video fashion like this, but uh, it's long overdue. I apologize for my delinquency. Uh, can't do anything else except say that to you for the past, but I do have a, a notepad here with several things on it that I would like to share with you and, and just to remind you of uh, that's coming up uh, in the life of our church that would help you uh, plan your calendar and think about things uh, in the days ahead. It's a beautiful Wednesday morning here. I don't know if you'll see this until this afternoon, uh, but I hope the beauty of the day continues uh, today. Uh, and some of these are in specific order, some of them are not, but I just want to tell you up front, I am excited about one of our outreach efforts uh, here at Parkview, which has to do with Little League Baseball. Uh, our team is called the Orioles. Uh, and so we are uh, coaching, uh, helping, serving, uh, fellowshipping with uh, 12, seven and eight year olds uh, and their families. And uh, we are looking forward to the impact that is gonna continue to happen with that. We've already begun to practice. Games will start in April. And what we're gonna ask you to do as a church is as we end up knowing that game schedule, we're gonna let you know what that is because we would love for you to come. Be a part of watching seven and eight year old uh, kids run around a ball field and learn the game of baseball have some fun watching them at that age do what they do, and then just blessing parents uh, and being uh, the hands and feet, the voice, the mouth, the, uh, the eyes and ears of Christ to families and serving them in very practical ways that uh, hopefully can lead to bridging uh, the conversation to spiritual things and ultimately sharing the gospel and seeing people saved, seeing people uh, blessed by God, through uh, our uh, ministry to them. So keep this in your mind that you will hear more about the Little League Baseball team called the Orioles. It's sponsored by Parkview Baptist Church. And pray for some of us who are trying to teach seven and eight year olds how to play baseball. Uh, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. Second thing I would invite you to do, especially if you get to see this before tonight, is I would invite you to be here this evening at six o'clock for prayer. Uh, that we gather together in the sanctuary and we pray as a church family. I want to read you uh, some words out of a, a powerful book that I, I love to open up uh, and have for years and gone back to for a long time. And this pastor said this about his experience in his church. He says, every time I've seen Satan win the day, I know that we have let our prayer guard down. And every time we've moved forward as a church family, it's been on our knees. So much can be said, should be said, needs to be said about prayer and our ability to know the heart of God, to chase after the mind of Christ, to know the will of God. And we cannot do it, I know this, apart from prayer. And I agree with him that with so many times where we see Satan winning certain battles, it's because the church is so prayerless. Um, the church has been prayerless for a long time in our culture, which makes us powerless. And I would just simply invite you. We don't, we, I don't necessarily believe we do everything perfect when it comes to praying on Wednesday nights. Uh, we're still trying to learn how to pray ourselves, and we just uh, want to uh, honor God, but we want to enter into a relationship with him more. And the only way we can do that is through uh, a communicating process where we talk to him, where we listen to him and we pray together. So I invite you to be with your church family uh, tonight uh, for prayer. This coming Friday, we're gonna do another one of these that we call Third Friday Fellowships in the Student Center uh, across the parking lot. I was not able to be at the last uh, game night on Friday night, so I will say this to you, just to try to poke some of you who are competitive. Uh, I hear there were some um, cornhole games going on. Have your game ready, because your pastor's coming. Some of you might want to put a ping pong paddle in your hand. I don't know. Be ready because, again, your pastor's coming. I like to have fun. If we play some cards around the table or if there's some board games around, whatever the case may be, I pray, again, that we'll just have some fellowship. Invite somebody that doesn't have a church family to say, hey, look, we're just going to hang out with people, have fun, eat some food. Hey, by the way, bring some of your favorite foods that you're known for. I'd love to eat some of your desserts or your special dishes of whatever and maybe we can enjoy some of that as well on a Friday night and enjoy games and fellowship together uh, as a church. Um, we've talked a little bit about having a special maybe blooper reel. 
Uh, if you noticed on Sunday mornings, we have uh, gone to a video announcement format. I love that format, by the way. It, uh, it uh, consolidates a lot of things and keeps us from getting too lost in announcements. But uh, again, maybe we'll have some fun at the expense of, of other people. Hey, uh, a quick update too on our discipleship groups. Our numbers keep growing. Even though sometimes some of our groups are, are having to stop their group and maybe jump in with another group. Again, I think our number this past week was 57, and a couple of our groups didn't even meet. And so I'm uh, hearing so many wonderful things. And one of my responses on that is this. As I hear the conversations that come from each group based on the Sunday morning message, what I'm hearing is the ability to create even more messages then because of what God is doing in the hearts and minds of all of you. Uh, in our church as we discuss at a deeper level and a more extensive level all the things that we're preaching about and learning about on Sunday morning. And, and so God's just revealing so many things. And God's adding people. New people are coming to our groups, and that's exciting as well. And I just want to encourage you, be a part of our discipleship efforts uh, on Sunday nights uh, and at other times during the week. You don't have to do it Sunday nights. You can do it other times. But uh, so much good is happening there. I'm so proud of our leaders, our hosts, okay? They're the ones that put out so much on the line. They, they get their homes ready every week. Um, and I just want to thank them for all the work that they do. Springtime is here. Not officially yet, but it is here. And so our week of prayer for our Annie Armstrong Easter offering is coming up. And it's going to be from Sunday, March 27th to Sunday, April the 3rd. Our goal for our Annie Armstrong Easter offering, which goes to any mission work in North America through our Southern Baptist Convention, our goal is $4,000. And so our March to the Cross, where we officially bring all of our offering in for our Annie Armstrong goal, is going to be Sunday, April the 3rd. Uh, you can give to it anytime you want to, but that'll be the main day that we focus on everybody bringing it in. Uh, but again, you, you bring your offering and you give it whenever you can, whenever you want to, above and beyond your, your, your giving to the church. This will go straight to the mission field. None of it is kept in any place for administrative purposes. 100% of these dollars go straight to all of our missionaries and all of our mission work across North America. And that's the best way to give when you know 100% of that particular offering is going right there. Sunday night, let me tell you about, about Sunday night. I love our discipleship groups, uh, but tonight, this coming Sunday night rather, we are going to take a one night break from meeting together in our groups. And we as a church, uh, whether you leave from your house or whether you carpool with somebody, we're going to Clayton, Alabama. At six o'clock at Clayton Baptist Church, Brother Herman Parker is going to be preaching on behalf of our association with a lot of these meetings that we had a couple or three years ago, if you remember in churches around, and they're going to be doing another one in Clayton on Sunday night. And because our own brother Herman is going to be speaking, I want us to go and be blessed uh, by him, be challenged by him, and let the Lord meet with us in Clayton and encourage some of our associational churches, our sister churches that um, may not have as many people as we have or, or other things. I want us to encourage them and say, hey, we're partners in the in the work of ministry and the gospel uh, proclamation around the world. And so you join us as we meet down there at 6 o'clock at Clayton Baptist Church in Clayton, Alabama. Brother Herman is going to be leading us. Now, Sunday morning, there's two things I want you to know about Sunday morning. We are going to continue our series of messages on the Lord's Prayer. And so many of you have, have spoken to me about what this series of messages, messages is doing in your life. And I'll say this to you for me personally. It has exceeded all of my expectations personally. God has taken me places as I prepare every week in this Lord's Prayer that I, I've never been. And I'm just grateful for what the Lord is doing in this. And this coming Sunday, there's two things that's going to happen. Number one, we're going to combine in this message the Lord's Supper. It's been a while since we've celebrated the Lord's Supper. And it's also the part of the message or the Lord's Prayer, rather, that as Jesus in this is how you should pray, he says, forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And then after the prayer is over with, he comes back and gives his very own commentary immediately following that and reminds us of this. If you do not forgive others, God will not forgive you. So this one's going to be yet again another kind of a hard-hitting message 
one that is necessary, one that is needed, uh, one that could be, and all the times I've ever said, hey, this will be the best message that I've ever preached or the most needed message ever, this idea and this doctrine, this teaching on forgiveness could very well be the number one thing we need to hear today in the church of Jesus Christ, in our culture, at Parkview, and in our own personal lives. And so you be here uh, this coming uh, Sunday for that. Obviously, we're coming to the close of that in a couple of weeks, and then we're going to have a three-Sunday run to Easter. And we're going to be talking about being fearless and, and living fearlessly in uncertain times for those three weeks that will take us up through Easter. So I'm looking forward uh, to the rest of March, to April as we lead into that. More things are coming uh, after that as your church council has put some things on the calendar, and so we'll share more with you about that then. But you be in prayer for all these activities. Tonight, prayer. Friday night, we're going to fellowship together in a game night next door uh, at 6.30 on Friday nights. Uh, Sunday is going to be packed with uh, Lord's Supper, message on forgiveness, forgiving ourselves, forgiving others as we ask God to forgive us. And, uh, and then Sunday night, Brother Herman's going to bring it. So you pray for Brother Herman uh, and Clayton Baptist Church and us as we join them uh, and celebrate what the Lord's doing uh, together. God bless you. I hope you're going to have a great day. And I look forward to seeing you tonight uh, or very soon. See you.